My name is Debbie Sutton. I'm ESA's Director of Membership and Marketing at the ESA headquarters in Annapolis, Maryland. And I'll be your host today during this online session entitled Know Before You Go to Vancouver. I'd like to thank you for joining us for the ESA webinar series, and we are recording today's webinar. During today's session, we'd like to make sure you're getting the most out of participating in this online course, so all attendees are muted on entry of the call due to the high number of participants. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, and I'd like to bring to your attention a tool that may be used for submitting questions. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll notice a dialog box with several options. Today, you'll use the questions box, which will allow you to post questions or concerns during the session. And we do encourage your use of this tool during the presentation, and the questions will be filtered to the speakers by the host. If during the session you have any technical problems, please type a note in the questions box and staff here will answer those. So at this time, I'll turn the session over to Casey Parker, ESA Student Affairs Committee Chair. Hi everyone and thanks for attending the Know Before You Go webinar that's also hosted by the Student Affairs Committee, uh, something put together by us specifically for the students. So as many of you are well aware at this point, the 2018 Joint Annual Meeting will be held in Vancouver, British Columbia from November 11th to the 14th. And before we go any further, I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to the webinar presenters today. So as I said, my name is Casey Parker. I'm the ESA Student Affairs Committee Chair. Jocelyn Holt is also here. She's our ESA SAC Vice Chair. Sandra is our ESA CCB representative. Ashley Kennedy is both our ESA SAC Eastern Branch representative and our representative to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Uh, Joanna is the ESC Student and Early Career Professionals, ESC being the Entomological Society of Canada. And Rebecca Zimler is our ESA Southeastern Branch representative. I also wanted to introduce you to the purpose of the Student Affairs Committee and what we are here to do for the society. So the Student Affairs Committee is composed of rep representatives from each ESA branch as well as each section of ESA. And we're responsible for stimulating interest in and organizing uh, events such as the student debate, a student organized symposium, which you'll get to hear a little bit more about today, a Know Before You Go webinar and blog series, the student and early career professionals reception, which we work with the ESA staff on, um, and also stimulating interest in things such as the Linnaean Games, student competition, student awards, as well as volunteer opportunities. So if you're ever looking to find out who your student affairs committee representative is for either your branch or your section, all of this information on the slide here is actually hosted on the ESA website. Our contact information is available there, and the Student Affairs Committee is composed of a great group of individuals. So if you ever need anything, feel free to reach out to your representative. And with that, I'll jump into our first part of the, the Know Before You Go webinar, which is actually a blog series that is also themed around the Know Before You Go topic. So these blogs are posted on Entomology Today. And this year we had five blogs uh, with five different topics, all composed by Student Affairs Committee members. So the first one was published by Carlos, and it's about the anatomy of a great entomological research poster. The second being award opportunities within ESA for uh, members. 10 tips for winning an entomology conference presentation by Lena. Symposium, uh, it was a blog article about the student organized symposium that will be hosted this year, which was written by Ashley. And the how the top ten team or the hop <laughs> how the top teams uh, prepare for the Linnaean Games every year, which was written by Emily. All of these web uh, all of these blogs can be found at the link at the bottom of the screen if you're interested in reading those in more detail. And I will hand it over to Jocelyn, who's going to talk to us more about the student organized symposium. Yes, thank you. So. Last year, we had the opportunity to host a very successful um, symposium on professional development on the power of collaboration. And this year, I am very excited that we will be sharing with you um, 
the Entomology Without Borders, Tackling Insecticide Resistance Through Science, Extension, and Collaboration. So mark your calendars for Tuesday, November 13th from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., where we have lots of great scientists coming in to talk um, from mosquitoes to bed bugs um, to cobbling moths. And we'd love to see you there in the Vancouver Convention Center um, in meeting room 224. And next, um, I'll let Sandra take it away with um, sharing some of the great things that you can do during the conference and while you're in Vancouver. All right, great. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. And um, so uh, now I'm going to talk about what to do at the meeting. There are all sorts of activities um, from workshops within the conference to um, tours outside of the conference center to um, get to know Vancouver. Sandra, sorry to interrupt, but uh, it might actually be better if you go back to that other view you were just on because we can't see your slides. Oh, sorry. Um, can you see them now? Yeah, I would just run through them in this platform, I think. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. Um, so the first of these um, activities are the workshops, and so these are held in the convention center as part of the conference. They're held um, during the same time as the um, presentation sessions. They're typically um, two to three hours long, and they're interactive. Um, some of these have filled up, but there are still three that um, you can sign up for. Um, first is the Extension Entomology Share Fair. So this is primarily for people who are interested in extension and outreach, and that is free. Um, the second is the STEM Bugs Workshop, and so this is primarily for people who are interested in educating youth in a school setting, um, working as or working alongside school teachers. And then the last of these three workshops is um, Story Circle Demo Day. So this is with Randy Olson, who is one of the keynote speakers. And so he's going to um, give a talk that's going to be available to absolutely everyone at the conference about communication skills and about the power of using stories um, to help people understand the entomological concepts that we want to communicate. And so there's also going to be a workshop that he will lead in which everyone can um, can practice these skills, and this is most relevant to um, academic communication, so in a formal institutional setting. And then the next of these opportunities are the lunch and learns. So these are sessions that are held during lunch, and they're about one hour long, and they're always free. And so these tend to sometimes be a little bit less interactive because there's less time. Um, and there are all sorts of lunch and learns, too many for me to list on this slide, um, that cover all sorts of topics, such as career development, including peer review, getting funding from NSF, um, mentor-mentee relationships. Then there's advocacy, justice, and equity. So um, improving equity within the entomological community and um, also advocating for entomology in a political context. And then there are also plenty of lunch and learns about teaching and outreach. Um, so assessing different outreach programs that you might run um, and also getting students excited about the entomological teaching that you are doing. And then there's always a whole bunch of uh, activities available in the exhibit hall. That is where the poster sessions are going to be. But even outside of the hours when the poster session is officially held, there's um, still always plenty of stuff to do in the exhibit hall. And so during the poster sessions um, and the receptions, a lot of times there'll be food and beverages available. There will be commemorative posters for this conference that will be sold um, in the exhibit hall. This is also a place for electrical I think we lost you there. Are you, uh, did you maybe step away from the microphone? All right. Um, so there will be publishers who will be in the exhibit hall, and you can buy books and journals. Sometimes you can get books signed by the authors. 
Um, there will be technical equipment um, booths. Um, you can learn about different microscopes. Um, a lot of universities will have booths in the exhibit hall, and you can learn about um, going to study at those universities. And there's also other entomological societies that have booths in the exhibit hall. Um, so sometimes you can even get, for example, a free membership to the Lepidoptera Society if you stop by their booth in the exhibit hall. And then there are tours every day um, to uh, see Vancouver beyond uh, the meeting, beyond the convention center. The, um, these um, all do cost a certain amount of money, but um, there are all sorts of tours from food tours in the markets to getting out into the rainforest and into the mountains. And so this is just one example of um, one of the sites that you can see on one of the tours that ESA has organized. And then there also are even more opportunities aside from those tours that are listed on the meeting website. Um, there will be a, a sunrise yoga session. You can also visit the Beatty Biodiversity Museum for free with your conference badge. And if um, you want to take a different tour than the tours that are organized, or if you want to take a tour at a different time, you can get a 10% discount on any of the daily sightseeing tours that are um, offered by Lancy Tours and Adventures. And then lastly, um, one fun thing, one last fun thing to do at the meeting is the Linnaean Games. So you can be a spectator to that. And so this is a student competition between teams from various universities. There are questions about all sorts of insect facts. And then the winners of the Linnaean Games are recognized at the award ceremony. And so now I'm going to turn it over. All right, so this is Casey here again, and I'm going to give you yet another thing that you can participate in at the ESA meeting, or the, uh, the joint annual meeting, sorry, uh, the JAM. Uh, so the student debates this year are themed um, around crossing borders, which is extremely appropriate considering that we're having a joint annual meeting in Vancouver this year. So we're addressing entomology in a changing world. The student debates are going to be held on Tuesday, November 13th, from one to four, so make sure to add that to your schedule uh, when you are putting everything together prior to coming to the conference. So the first topic that we're going to have uh, debated is what is the most harmful invasive insect species in the world? So Lena Barneola will be doing the unbiased introduction for this topic, followed by a heated debate between Washington State University and Ohio State University. Our second topic is how can scientists diffuse the stigma or scare factors surrounding issues that become controversial? Uh, so Kaylee Howery will be doing our unbiased introduction, followed by a debate by Virginia Tech as, uh, versus the Louisiana State University. And finally, the last topic that is going to be debated is what new and emerging technologies have the potential to revolutionize entomology, with the unbiased introduction being done by Priyanka Mitapelli and the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign versus the University of Minnesota. This is a very exciting event and I strongly encourage you to attend. Also for um, some of our Canadian students, I know that we weren't able to get um, Canadian participation this year, but in future uh, joint annual meetings, I think it would be great if you guys attend and are able to form teams in the future to participate in this event. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Ashley Kennedy, who's going to share with you uh, one more thing to do at the meeting and then move into talking about some of the other uh, activities that she's involved in as well. Thanks, Casey. This is Ashley. Uh, and another thing that you really don't want to miss at this meeting is the awards breakfast. So it's going to be bright and early Tuesday morning. Uh, and this is when the ESA Professional Awards, as well as the Early Career Professional Awards and awards specific to the Entomological Society of Canada are, are going to be given out. So you'll want to be there to cheer on your colleagues and peers who are getting awards. And um, it's very affordable. It's a $5 ticket that you should order in advance online. It's uh, $6 Canadian. Um, and that gets you a full breakfast buffet as well as a morning of entertainment. So 
uh, it's really um, a good deal. You're getting uh, more than a $5 value out of it. Um, but do keep in mind that there's going to be limited tickets available on site. So your best bet at getting admission to this event is to buy your ticket now. Um, one of the events that takes place at the awards breakfast is the Founders Memorial Award Lecture. This year, the recipient is Dr. Shirley Luckhart from the University of Idaho. And the topic of her talk is he gave to man control over that dreadful scourge, yellow fever. So it's about Walter Reed, the US Army doctor who about 100 years ago uh, made the connection that mosquitoes uh, vector yellow fever virus. And Dr. Luckhart herself is doing a really interesting work on Anopheles mosquitoes, which vector malaria. So she's uh, carrying the torch that Walter Reed ignited over 100 years ago. So I'm really looking forward to that lecture. Additionally, there's going to be a, a heritage lecture given by Dr. Judy Myers from the University of British Columbia. And this is on the topic, insect pests and invasive species don't stop at the border, which dovetails really nicely with the overarching theme of the whole meeting, crossing borders, entomology in a changing world. Uh, Dr. Myers is an expert on um, everything from Western tent caterpillar population cycles to biocontrol of purple loose strife and winter moth, I mean, just to name a few of the things from uh, her accomplished background. So again, this is a, a really great event that's only $5 if you get your ticket in advance. Uh, limited tickets available on site. So as Casey mentioned at the beginning, I am the liaison to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, and I have several exciting updates from that committee. The first thing is that uh, ESA is asking every attendee to please read the code of conduct before the meeting. That's really important. You can find it on the website. When you arrive at the meeting, when you go to the registration desk to pick up your badge, you can also get preferred pronoun stickers. So this is kind of cool. It's just um, letting others know uh, how you would prefer to be uh, referred to. You can also get ally stickers, and I've seen the design for them. They're really cool looking. They're um, a very eye-catching rainbow design. So this is just a way that you can designate yourself as an ally. Uh, additionally, when you go to the ESA booth in the main exhibit hall, you can pick up these colored safety pens um, and decorate them with beads. And this is a new thing we're doing this year where each different colored bead uh, corresponds to a different identity. So some of those identities are cultural or ethnic, or they might refer to, um, you know, for example, if you identify as a uh, LGBTQ minority, or some of them um, represent just a kind of fun, goofy things. Like, for example, there's a color that corresponds to, I like eating insects. So that's just um, a subtle, fun way that you can uh, learn what you have in common with other ESA members. And we're doing, again this year, if you were able to join us in Denver, you might have seen in the exhibit hall this diversity web spinner game. So it's pretty cool. It's just a, a pegboard with different colored yarn. And the idea is you wrap the yarn around different pegs that correspond to different identities. So similar to the safety pen, um, they'll be labeled with things like, for example, I am a parent or I am a veteran or I am a vegetarian and there's all different kinds of things and at the end of the meeting the idea is we have this really engaging visual display that highlights both the diversity of ESA membership as well as our shared connections to bring us together. So definitely take a few minutes out of your conference to check that out. It's going to be near the ESA booth in the exhibit hall. The Diversity and Inclusion Committee is also hosting a symposium on the theme of continued challenges in entomology from a woman's perspective. This is at 8 o'clock Sunday morning in meeting room 118. And I looked over the lineup of speakers and it looks just really phenomenal. There's speakers from academia and museums, um, from industry, from organizations that are outside of ESA. Uh, so some really uh, interesting speakers who have a lot to share. Uh, and this is intended, you know, it's not, it's not just for women, it is for all audiences. We're hoping a lot of men will attend that as well. So definitely um, bookmark that in your program book. I'm going to talk briefly about volunteering. Uh, there was an 
email that went out from ESA to all student members and early career professional members about volunteer opportunities. And uh, if you didn't already jump on that, by this point, um, it's likely that all of the positions are filled. They tend to go really quickly uh, because ESA very generously uh, reimburses up to, uh, reimburses $150 of your registration fee if you complete six hours of volunteer work at the meeting. So it's a really a uh, great deal. It's also a lot of fun. I've met some of my best friends volunteering at ESA meetings in the past. I'm not kidding. Um, and it's pretty simple. Uh, no prior experience required. It's on the job training. Some of the typical volunteer duties include um, helping in the presentation preview room or the registration desk or the ESA booth in the main hall or at the Linnean Games or at the student awards or student uh, reception. So at, at this point, like I mentioned, it, it's likely too late to sign up, but this is something you definitely want to keep in mind for next year. You want to keep an eye out for that email that goes out early in the fall. Um, and there is a possibility that some people who signed up to be volunteers won't be able to complete their shift for whatever reason. So uh, it's worth seeing if you can sign up to be on the on-call volunteer list. I'm going to talk about the different student competitions. Most students who attend ESA participate in one of these competitions. Uh, one of the most popular ones is the 10-minute paper competition. So this is a 10-minute talk. Uh, it's recommended that you uh, set aside eight minutes to give your talk and then allow two minutes for a question and answer at the end. Uh, I copied and pasted the rubric from the website, which tells you that you're going to be graded equally on the scientific content of your presentation as well as uh, the presentation itself. So some of the things you want to keep in mind as you're preparing your talk are, you know, are you clearly stating your objectives and um, you want to make sure while you're talking that you're maintaining eye contact with the audience. Uh, so these are just a, a few things to keep in mind as you prepare. And again, this rubric and the other rubrics are available on the website. They're easy to search for. There are also three-minute talk competitions. The rubric is uh, similar to the 10-minute talk where it's 50% uh, content and then 50% uh, presentation, so engagement and communication. And these are a really fun event to attend just as an audience member if you didn't sign up to take part in them, uh, because you get to listen to dozens of talks in a pretty short window. Uh, so it's, it's fast paced, it's exciting, they span a wide range of topics. Um, so this is something you, you might want to block off, even if it, you might want to mark in your schedule, even if you didn't sign up to be a, a, a presenter. This is an example slide that was provided by Emily Krauss, who is one of the 2017 Three Minute Talk winners. And I'm really impressed by how it's highly visual. You know, when you only have three minutes to share your research, you don't want to pack too much text onto a slide because you don't want the audience to be sitting there reading it. You want them to be paying attention to what you're saying. So this is um, a great example of an award winning three minute talk slide. The poster competition rubric is a little bit different because there's a little more emphasis, 60% on the scientific content and then 40% on the poster display. Um, you'll want to make sure that you include all of these different sections that are mentioned here, you know, objectives, material and methods, results, discussion, et cetera, um, and make sure that it's legible, easy to read, no grammatical errors. Some general guidelines for every presenter to follow, whether you're giving a talk or presenting a poster. It's best to avoid jargon and acronyms. You want to make sure that your talk or your poster is accessible to people who aren't in your specific sub-discipline. You want to speak slowly and enunciate clearly if you're giving a talk. Um, it's advised that you avoid red-green combinations because it's a pretty good chance that someone in the audience is going to have red-green color blindness. It's best to enhance the contrast between the background and the text and figures, uh, but don't go overboard with it. Don't use like neon colors that hurt the eyes. You'll want to use large legible text, something that's easy to read, such as Arial. And you don't want to do what I did on this slide and crowd the slide with too much text. So this is a good example right here of what not to do. Um, you want to have really simplified graphs and tables, make it 
uh, easy to digest as an audience member. You don't want the audience sitting there trying to puzzle out what your graph means. So, you know, this is um, a good thing to check by practicing your talk with a friend, especially a friend who's not in your subdiscipline or maybe not even in entomology at all, because uh, that'll let you know how digestible, how easy it is to understand um, for, for someone who isn't familiar with your research. We have until the end of the day Friday to edit the abstracts online, and you can find your abstract on the speaker's corner on the website. And lastly, this is my last slide before I um, sign off here. Uh, what to wear? It's recommended that students dress in business casual or even slightly more formal. So for example, maybe a dress shirt and slacks or a skirt or dress, and especially on the day that you're giving your presentation. You will see people who are more casually dressed. Entomology is a very fun field in that way. Um, but typically, those are people who are more established in their careers, you know, later stage professionals, so they can get away with it. So um, if you want to play it safe, it's best to just keep in mind that you're going to be meeting a lot of new people, making a lot of first impressions, and you never know when you're going to be meeting your future employer. And then lastly, it's recommended that you take off your name badge when you're leaving the convention center, just for safety reasons. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm here to give you a little bit more of a Canadian perspective on the meeting. And I want to start by um, telling you about the Remembrance Day, which is celebrated every year on November 11th by Canadians. Uh, this day commemorates sacrifices of those who have served and continue to serve during times of war, conflict, and peace. And usually there are ceremonies and parades, but no matter where we are, we always observe a silent uh, moment of remembrance. And this is usually at 11 a.m., which is the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Uh, this year's jam starts on November 11th, which is a Sunday, and there are student and oral sessions scheduled during that time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have all jam activities stop for one minute at 11 a.m., and this will be initiated by the moderator in each room. And after that one minute of silence, we'll resume normal schedule. Um, we ask you to please respect it and uh, invite you all to participate in it. You might also see many Canadians wearing poppies, usually on lapels of the jackets. Poppies are worn as symbols of remembrance, and they will be available at registration, and everybody is invited and welcome to get them and wear them during the conference. Uh, next, I want to tell you a little bit about silent auction. Um, ESC students organize silent auction every year, and all the proceeds go towards student awards. And we have many new and used items, which include things like books, uh, art, and this year we also have uh, many vouchers and certificates for local businesses, and you can see some of the um, example uh, donors on the right with the logos. And uh, silent auction will be in exhibit hall, but do keep in mind that bidding on some of the items will close early, so if there's something that you really want from the auction, I encourage you to visit the table frequently and make sure you place your bid before the, uh, the bidding on those items closes. And we're also still taking donations for the silent auction. So if you have something that you want to donate, some books or anything uh, entomology related, feel free to do so. Uh, you can contact me directly um, and I can provide my contact information later at the end. Another event that I would encourage everybody to check out is Graduate Student Showcase. Once again, this is organized by ESC. Uh, uh, this is a high profile opportunity for students who are closer to finishing their degree to provide a more in-depth overview of their thesis research. To present uh, the graduate student showcase, uh, you have to go through a competitive process. And this year we actually opened this process to both uh, Canadian and American students. GSS is a plenary session. It will be on Sunday afternoon, November 11th from 3 to 5 p.m. And we have five presentations approximately 25 minutes each and we encourage everybody to um, attend it's a really uh, great set of presentations um, and especially for uh, those of you who are canadian if, if you haven't seen it before do check it out because you can apply when you're closer to finishing your degree 
Um, also keep in mind that it is a really large meeting. So managing your time while you're at the gym is really important. And to help you do that, you can use the online scheduler and the app. And um, if you go onto the online scheduler, you'll be able to add specific activities to your schedule. And um, you, you get a, um, an actual timetable of what you plan to do. And the app is pretty neat too, because it gives you actually maps um, of, of where to go in the, um, in the conference center. You can directly link to social media. You can get the schedule uh, really quickly. So that's very handy. We encourage you to use it. And when you're planning your activities, um, try to plan um, all sorts of activities, which include academic, social, and local. So I suggest starting with uh, big items like keynote speakers and symposia. Of course, make sure you're scheduling the time when you are presenting and then add in smaller pieces. Um, you know, you can add in lunch and learns if you want to be maybe a spectator in the linear games or student debates, add those in. And um, make some time in your schedule if you can for some local things like um, maybe one of the tours uh, of Vancouver. But one piece of advice is also do not fill up your entire schedule because you will be overwhelmed. So give yourself some time off as well. Nobody's expecting you to um, fill up the entire schedule you know, from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. And while you're at the conference, obviously um, very important to network. Biggest piece of advice I can give you about that is um, to contact people that you want to talk to early if possible. You can uh, contact most people by email this information. The contact information is available. Um, if there's maybe a prospective supervisor or somebody that uh, you've been following their work and really want to talk to them, just send them a note and, and let them know that you want to talk to them. And maybe even arrange to um, you know, have coffee or, or just meet them after they present. And the reason I'm saying this is because it's unlikely that you're just going to run into somebody randomly. But in cases that you do run into somebody that you want to talk to, uh, do have a short elevator pitch ready. But limit yourself to you know just two or three sentences about yourself. Just you know, my name is. I'm from this university. Um, this is my research interest. Um, and the conversation will will you know um, progress if you have common interests. You don't need to give um, three paragraph description of what you do. And of course, for networking, attend mixers is one of the best ways to network. Next, I want to tell you just a few things about Vancouver and getting in there and uh, getting around the city. So Vancouver is a coastal seaport city in Western Canada, and it's one of the largest Canadian cities. It's also a very green city, and it's quite beautiful. So we're very excited to be hosting uh, the joint meeting this year. Most of it will probably um, arrive by plane. So to get from the airport to downtown, uh, two best options are either take a cab, which is going to be approximately $35 to get to downtown, or you can take Canada Line, which is a above and below ground train. This is about three to five dollars. If you choose to do the Canada Line, um, it would take you approximately 30 minutes and you have to get off at the waterfront station. And the waterfront station is just a few blocks away from most of the conference hotels. To get a ticket for uh, the Canada Line, you can just get a single fare. You can get a compass card, which allows you to make multiple trips. If you're, for example, planning to be exploring the city a little bit, or you can just tap your credit card as well. And um, I can explain um, later if somebody has questions about this. Um, a few things about currency. Most businesses will not accept US dollars. So either bring Canadian currency with you or exchange at the airport or before you come, or just use a credit card. Those are the best options. And in terms of Canadian money, you do not have to be suspicious. They actually are really colorful. So this is what they look like. Uh, the bills are colorful and the coins we do not have a penny. Um, it's been taken out of circulation. So uh, your change, if you're paying cash, your change is rounded up or down to the nearest five cents. And uh, two coins to um, kind of keep in mind is a one and two dollar um, coins. One dollar coin is nicknamed a loony because it has a, a common loon on it. And a two dollar coin is called a toonie. So in case somebody asks you if you have a toonie or a loony, this is what they mean. And while you're in Vancouver, I encourage you to check out the local scene a little bit. One of the cool places to go is uh, Gastown. This is within walking distance from the uh, conference center. It's one of the oldest neighborhoods in Vancouver, and it has lots of boutiques, galleries, great restaurants, as well as bars. So it is a very popular place to go. 
Um, there are lots of um, local attractions that you can check out. This includes the walking tours as well as all the tours that are organized by the, uh, the dam. You can check out Stanley Park as well. Um, one really cool um, thing to do is uh, to check out Flyover Canada. And there's lots of lots of natural beauty. We're right at the coast. Um, and if you have time and if you want to do something extra, um, you can travel to Whistler's, which is one and a half hour from Vancouver. And um, there are many uh, tickets and packages for these things that I've mentioned actually um, at the silent auction. So you can get a pretty good price uh, for, for these cool things. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Um, and one of the main reasons you're obviously going to Vancouver is to attend the conference, not just to walk around Vancouver. Um, so I just want to tell you a few things about the Vancouver Convention Center. It is right at the waterfront and most of the events are held there. And you can see uh, some pictures here of what it looks like inside to give you an idea of what a typical presentation room will look like. And um, the hallways of the center um, have lots of seating areas, which is really great. And uh, a fun fact is that several of the conference hotels are actually connected with tunnels, to the conference center, as uh, so a convention center. So you might not actually have to go outside at all. And if you're at any point you're looking for a friendly face, um, just reach out to one of um, the jam reps, uh, Casey, myself, or Dan. Um, we'll, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions and just um, help you out if, you're, if you have any questions. And now I will pass it on to the next panelist. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, my name is Rebecca, and I am going to talk to you a little bit about um, the student reception, uh, as well as some mingling tips and some things to pack. Uh, so all registered students and recent graduates are invited to attend the student reception on Tuesday, November 13th from 8 to 11 p.m. at Steamworks Brew Pub, and this is located within walking distance of the Vancouver Convention Center. The annual student reception is the perfect time to mix and mingle with fellow students and young professionals in a more relaxed environment. Attendees can sample the offerings of the venue as well as enjoy the space and activities available throughout the evening while getting to know your peers. Please bring your ID and name badges as proof of registration for this reception and more information on the student reception can be found on the ESA website located under the 2018 ESA annual meeting page or you can follow the link in the presentation slide. So next I'm going to talk a little bit about places to uh, mingle and network throughout the meeting. Uh, ESA meetings boast numerous opportunities to mingle with peers and network with potential colleagues. Several ESA branches will host a mixer for their members, so check out the program schedule to find out where your branch's mixer will be held. I highly encourage you to attend these mixers as they foster networking, collaborations, as well as provide a great opportunity to meet other members within your branch. There are also several university specific mixers for students, alumni and associates, and this is a great way to connect with other members of your university. So if you were looking to network, remember to bring your business cards. The welcome reception will immediately follow the opening plenary session and coincides with the opening of the exhibit hall and poster hall. This reception is heavily attended and encourages mingling and networking for a wide variety of interests. Another popular event to meet your peers is a more casual space in the student reception, which we previously discussed. There's some other networking opportunities, which include the women in entomology breakfast. And this is a gathering um, that is designated for women in different career stages to bridge disciplinary silos and encourage networking, mentoring and collaboration among established female entomologists, young professionals and students. And more information on this program can be found on the ESA website. Symposiums, lunch and learns and tables at the exhibit halls are all places where you can generate conversation and expand your network. So you can take every moment as an opportunity to engage with other attendees to form connections that may benefit your future. All right, next I'll go over a few networking tips. So I think the biggest tip is go where the people are. A 
good place to start is by attending the many events we have talked about in this webinar. You can tailor your networking connections to your goals by planning your schedule beforehand and attending talks or other gatherings where people you want to meet will be assembling. If you want to attend graduate school at a certain university, find their table in the exhibit hall and talk to some of the current students. If you want to obtain a postdoc in a medical entomology someday, attend a symposium based on that topic. When you get there, introduce yourself and you could start a dialogue. For example, introduce yourself to a speaker after a talk you found particularly interesting and converse about your mutual interest. Networking often starts at meetings, but most networking occurs after the conference. So after collecting business cards, make key notes on the cards to help keep up with everyone you meet and assist with follow-up conversations. Shortly after the conference, send a follow-up email to your new contact, thanking them for the information, advice, and inquire if they're going to another conference you might see them at. So maintaining this dialogue with your contacts is an important part of networking, so don't be afraid to periodically email people within your network and keep in touch. In addition to your standard traveling pack list, it is important to bring a few additional items for the 2018 annual meeting. These extra items you may need are a CV resume, business cards, schedule presentation materials, and professional dress attire. Printed copies of your CV or resume can be handed out during mixers and receptions, as well as posted to the career bulletin board. Uh, the Career Bulletin Board is a place where students looking for a graduate research position, job, or postdoc can pin their resume for future employment. Your school probably has a career center that can help you build a resume if you need one. Business card exchanges are a key aspect of networking. Uh, cards can be uh, also placed with your poster presentations, even if you're not standing by your poster, viewers have a way of contacting you if they have questions or are interested in your research. If you do not have any business cards, your school may have an office that can print business cards for you or be able to recommend a local printer. Uh, bring a backup of your oral presentation on a thumb drive if you're giving one. It's always better to be safe than sorry. And if you are bringing a poster, you will need to provide your own supplies to fasten your poster at ESA, as ESA will not be preventing, uh, providing any. So bring your own Velcro strips or push pins to secure your display to the poster board. If you want to make friends, bring extra, as you may find someone else in need of these supplies. During ESA meetings, business casual attire is recommended, as we previously discussed in the webinar. So it is especially important for students to make good first impressions when networking and dressing professionally helps to do this. And again, I want to um, emphasize the importance of removing your name tag outside the convention for safety purposes. And with that, I will hand the presentation over to Casey for some concluding remarks. Thank you. All right, so we've certainly given you guys a lot to think about, a lot of things that you need to attend. But of course, this meeting is as much for you as it is for the other attendees. So make sure that uh, you're getting as much out of this conference as you can. You're meeting the people that you want to meet. You're presenting yourself in a way that you would be proud of and that would make your advisor um, or uh, if you're an early career professional, your new employer happy as well. Um, so with that, we're happy to take any questions that you guys might have about attending the meeting. I believe most of the webinar presenters have stayed on, so feel free to specifically ask us any questions. Um, but if nothing else, we're gonna see you in Vancouver, and I'm really looking forward to that. So Casey, I think we've answered uh, most of the questions individually as we've gone along. Um, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up. And uh, thanks again to all the presenters. A wonderful, very, very helpful webinar. And as mentioned prior, this has been recorded and it will be posted on the ESA website under nstock.org backslash webinars. And uh, we'll see you in Vancouver. Thank you.